Okay, so we have one more hour um, to talk about shortness of breath and some of the causes and treatments. But I'll try not to take it personally that no one's clapping when I start talking. So <laughs> So we'll start with asthma. Dương nâng chập đâm, chỉ mùi nâng chụm ngư hớt. So asthma is really a disease of the airways and they become a lot more reactive than normal. Chụm ngư hớt này cứ chia chụm ngư phâu đồng hớm đại lùa miên ca rủ liệt khó bị thoa mà đà. Asthma causes wheezing, shortness of breath. Asthma can also cause chest pain or chest tightness. Asthma can also be a cause for coughing, nighttime, early morning coughing. So this is a picture of the airway that has muscles in it. So the top picture is the picture of a bronchial of an asthmatic. So in the airway of an asthmatic patient, the muscles become very large and they, they excrete too many secretions. Both of those problems cause airway obstruction, so that the airway in the top picture is a lot narrower than the one at the bottom. This is especially a problem when someone with asthma has an infection. So when patients get an infection or an allergy in their lungs, the problem with their airway, the excess secretions and the smooth muscle contractions becomes worse. So a patient with asthma usually starts getting sick slowly. Their volume status, they, they're usually low or normal. They usually do not have too much volume. Their wheezing is particularly noticeable during expiration when they're breathing air out of their lungs. Uh, so 
Very seriously ill asthmatic patients can come to the hospital with a very low oxygen. They may be failing to breathe because of, their, of, of low oxygen. They may also become so tired from breathing so fast that they actually fail to breathe, so they have a high carbon dioxide level. They may also so this is a patient video um, of a lady who came into the hospital here in Cambodia with asthma. ນີ້ຄືຊິວິດີໂອໄດ້ Sorry, I'm not going to sound like. Um, so we'll do wheezing later. So emergency treatment for asthma for this very sick patient. Of course, we're going to give her supplemental oxygen. We want her oxygen level to be up to 95%. We are also inhaled bronchodilators or beta 2 agonists. And I think the one here is salbutamol. But uh, salbutamol. Ipatropium is another medication that we give in addition to the beta two agonist. agonist. And another thing that's really important to remember in asthma are steroids. These patients all need steroids during an acute asthma exacerbation. Antibiotics are only needed if someone with asthma also has an infection like pneumonia. ពពួកថ្នាំអង្គទីប៊ូតិកគឺមានសារៈសំខាន់តែក្នុងករណីដែលអ្នកជំងឺហើយមានការបង្ករោគរួមសំបន្ថែមទៀតជាពិសេសក
ប្រសិនបើអ្នកជំងឺមានការនឿយហត់យ៉ាងខ្លាំងនោះគឺអាចធ្វើឲ្យអ្នកជំងឺមានការដកដង្ហើមកាន់តញាប់ហើយនឹ
tụm nong chiên đứng chờ ở tại miền ca miền chủng ngư rồi lịa suốt bàn thay em tiền. So in addition to the age of the patient, it's important to know where they got the infection. Lơ bàn thay em bị lơ mu là hai nơi à dụ dương co trâu trong đằng bàn thay em tiệt đái thả tá ca bằng co ruột rồi bọn nẹt chủng ngư rồi lịa xe suốt làm rai ní cứ quạt cao lang bị xả hạ cúm rứ co bị khăn ông mình tiệt bệnh. This is important so that you are able to choose the correct antibiotic. There are certain diseases to consider if the patient has HIV or AIDS. It's also important to think about if that patient has been exposed to tuberculosis because those antibiotics are, are different. So the treatment for pneumonia is important for antibiotics, oxygen, and IV fluids. Oxygen Okay, so I also promised that we would talk about congestive heart failure as a cause for shortness of breath. This picture is a picture of jugular venous distension on his neck. So this is an important physical exam finding in a patient who has volume overload. So these patients may also have wheezing, as we mentioned with asthma. They may also have crackles or rails in their pulmonary exam, especially at the base of their lungs. When, when you're listening to a patient with CHF and you're listening to their lung exam, what you're hearing is fluid, too much fluid in the lungs. There, there can be so much fluid that they are their oxygen level is so low that they have respiratory failure. These patients usually feel better if they sit upright. So it's a good idea for patients with shortness of breath, you as the nurse and doctor taking care of them, you should get them to sit upright. In addition, we'll review some medications that you can give them. And these medicines help to shift the fluid out of the lungs so the patient can breathe. 
nam chẳng on ấy cứ chết nam để ai chui thưa ao tức nông nông thằng suốt nông chân vĩnh rư có ai nôm ao quạt miền ca đỏ đằng hàm suối lòng vĩnh so nitrates dilate the veins so that some of the fluid shifts out of the lungs nitrate cứ chết nam để ai chui thưa ao tức chân pi sờ sai vẽ đằng chân hai ai thưa ao quạt uh, uh, we'll also talk about ferrosamide or Lasix and morphine. And this is a picture of a patient with CHF. The fluid that they accumulate can be visible in many different parts of their body, which is what this picture shows. Uh, Does everyone recognize the medicine ferrosamide? Lasix. Lazilic. Yeah. Raise your hand if you understand Lasix. Um, so some patients take this at home as a pill. Many patients will come to the hospital because they have stopped taking their Lasix, they ran out. If this happens, you can give it IV at the same dose that they take at home. And the reason to do that if they are short of breath is just because the IV Lasix works a little faster than the pill. Uh, Using nitrates for congestive heart failure. It's really important that you know the patient's blood pressure before starting nitrates. Nitrates will drop the blood pressure of your patient with CHF. So nitrates can be very, very helpful with patients with CHF. So if their blood pressure is high or normal, it is a good way to make their symptoms improve. For a severe exacerbation of congestive heart failure, you should start a drip of, of nitros. Drips. Um, another, if you do have hypotension, if you have low blood pressure during a CHF exacerbation, you can help the heart beat, more, beat uh, stronger by using dopamine, which some hospitals here do have. They have dopamine. And if the patient has a lot of wheezing, sometimes a beta agonist, so salbutamol, can help their breathing. 
hai bờ sân bờ này chấm gươm miền vi dính cứ cà pra pra sal bùi tầm bốn cứ ai chui đo cà đo thằng hờ một bọn này chấm gươm This is a picture of a mask that we did not bring on this trip. Um, it's a positive pressure ventilation mask. This is a great treatment for patients with CHF that may avoid the need for endotracheal intubation. So looking at this picture, you're able to see the entire mask. There's nothing in the patient's mouth. The machine can deliver a high level of oxygen under pressure, forcing it into the lungs. So many patients with CHF can improve a lot with that mask. Now I want to review um, a blood clots in the in the lung, so pulmonary emboli. When a patient comes in with shortness of breath, especially some shortness of breath that came on suddenly. Many times the blood clot has traveled from a different part of the body, maybe the leg, to arrive to the lung. One of the reasons people develop blood clots is because recently they have been ill or immobilized. Patients with cancer are more likely to form blood clots. Additionally, patients who are pregnant or have been recently pregnant are more likely to form a blood clot. So it's important to ask all of the, these questions to the patient to see what clues they have to whether they are at risk of a pulmonary embolus. You can also ask the patient themselves if they have ever had a blood clot in the past. If so, this means that they are at high risk of developing another blood clot. The reason for that could be an illness that they have that could be congenital from their family.
Patients who take hormone replacement pills are also at a higher risk. Patients with blood clots in their lung are not only short of breath, they usually have chest pain as well. On physical exam, when you checked for edema in the legs, uh, it's also important to check for swelling or tenderness in the back of the leg, the calf. Uh, Many patients can develop a blood clot in one leg that will then go to the lung. Also on the physical exam, many times the lungs are actually clear with the pulmonary embolus. Uh, other signs and symptoms can be hard to sort out, but they usually have a fast heart rate and a fast respiratory rate. ปន្តែតែតាមមានការពិបាកក្នុងការស្វាយរកប៉ុន្តែរោគសញ្ញាដែលកើតមានជាញឹកញាប់ដែលយើងរកឃើញគឺមានចង្វាក់បេះដូង
So in this chest X-ray, can someone tell me which side the pneumothorax is in? So I'm hearing left. Good. So the pneumothorax is on the left from this, and it's basically darker than the other side. There's a lack of of lung findings on the left side. This line is the lung marking, and past the, that line, all of this is empty space. So there's a lot of air in between the chest wall and where the lung is collapsed. Okay. On this next X-ray, the pneumothorax is on the right. And you can see the collapsed lung on the right and a lot of empty space where there's air between the chest wall and the lung. So the problem causing shortness of breath in a pneumothorax is that one lung is collapsed. So when you do a physical exam with someone with a pneumothorax, you have decreased breath sounds on the side of the chest where the pneumothorax is. The reason for the decreased breath sounds is because they're not breathing on that side. When, if you percuss the chest, they will have hyper resonance on the side where the pneumothorax is, signifying air on the other side. And a tension pneumothorax is when the lung is damaged and the air is increasing in size. Tension pneumothorax the air can become so large that it can displace the trachea to the other side. A tension pneumothorax can also cause a low blood pressure and a very fast heart rate. Tension pneumothorax can also cause a low blood pressure and a very fast and especially a tension pneumothorax is an emergency. You have to make an intervention that will allow the air to be removed from the chest cavity. So this can be done through a needle catheter or a chest tube. So, 
If there is no evidence of a tension pneumothorax, you can place a chest tube and avoid the needle. The needle is to, to act fast, and then you always put a chest tube. Uh, it's also very dangerous at to put a patient on a ventilator if they have a pneumothorax. Uh, so putting a patient on a ventilator with a pneumothorax can cause a tension pneumothorax. So you don't want to do that. So if you think someone has a pneumothorax, you can confirm with a chest X-ray. And place a chest tube to allow the air to leave. So other causes of shortness of breath that are not cardiac and not pulmonary? So patients with anemia or bleeding? Having a low hemoglobin means that they have a lower ability to carry oxygen. And having a oxygen. So the treatment for shortness of breath for anemia is to transfuse or and find the the source of the bleeding if they are bleeding so pregnant patients as i mentioned are at a higher risk to develop a blood clot in the lung and pregnancy, the lung volumes are also smaller. They're decreased to make room for the baby. For that reason, shortness of breath is a common complaint during pregnancy. So it's important to do a thorough history and physical exam on pregnant patients who are short of breath. As I mentioned earlier, acidosis can also be a cause of shortness of breath. Diabetes, as in diabetic ketoacidosis, can cause shortness of breath. The treatment for someone in ketoacidosis is to give them IV fluids. If their glucose is very high and they're diabetic, 
You also need to give them insulin. ប្រសិនបើជាតិស្គាល់នៅក្នុងឈាមរបស់គាត់មានកម្រិតខ្ពស់យ៉ាងខ្លាំងនោះយើងអាចប្រើអ៊ីនស៊ូលីន Too much alcohol can also cause a ketoacidosis. ការដែលមានជាតិអាល់កូលច្រើនក៏អាចបណ្ដាលឲ្យមានកេតូអាស៊ីដូស៊ីស However in alcoholic ketoacidosis the person's blood glucose may be low. ប៉ុន្តែក្នុងករណីការដែលមានកេតូអាស៊ីតូស៊ីសដោយសារមានជាតិអាល់កូលខ្ពស់នោះគឺជាតិស្គាល់នៅក្នុងឈាមតែងត
Vasodilation, which we can do with nitrates. Positive pressure ventilation was the picture of the mask that I showed you. Positive uh, pressure ventilation Cardiac support is when you think the heart is beating too weakly. You can make the heart beat stronger and better with dopamine. We also talked about pneumonia and the treatment for pneumonia. Patients with pneumonia need an antibiotic that is chosen to treat the type of pneumonia that they have. So this is when it's important to ask their history if they have been exposed to tuberculosis or HIV, AIDS. So these patients may need to be admitted to the hospital for oxygen while their oxygen is low. Other causes are important to remember to, to not exclude lung and heart um, problems. Anxiety is an important cause of shortness of breath, but it's not a diagnosis, it's a diagnosis of exclusion. We have to exclude all of the life threatening causes first. anxiety. Uh, anxiety. It's also important to remember that one patient can have two causes for shortness of breath. So especially patients with COPD and asthma may easily develop a pneumothorax. So we will this afternoon go through some cases to discuss the treatment more in more depth about these, these particular disease processes. And thank you so much for your attention. I'd like to also thank Dr. Chanta for translating all of this, and we'll take some questions if you have any. Thank you.